sorry. Uh, okay, <laughs> it wasn't quite ready to start. All right, so um, the, you know, the, again, this the distance ladder. Um, actually, it turns out in this chapter we're going to uh, we, we will ultimately complete the distance ladder. We'll we'll see how how um, you know how we take the next step uh, beyond uh, two hundred and fifty megaparsecs. Uh, of course, remember this this distance. Um, uh, is basically the limit at which we can um, distinguish uh, Cepheid variables from, you know, from other from other objects, uh, you know, other stars in, in, in these di in these distant galaxies. So, but this takes us really far out, um, you know, away from the Milky Way. Uh, but but you know, not that's it's it's only 25 million parsecs away right i, I mean it, it you know the universe is much much bigger than that um so you know how do we find the distances to other to other objects um all right so uh here let's let's take a look at this um so this is this is another um thing that was actually i think it was discovered i think it was in the 70s 1970s anyhow um, there, there were these two folks that were T Tully and Fisher, who um, actually using so, so th this is the, thing, the important thing about the Tully Fisher relationship. Um, this only works for um, spiral galaxies. Okay, so you got to have a spiral galaxy for this to work. Um, when you look at a spiral galaxy, you part of it, it, so it, look, look at this pic. This picture really shows it, this very, very well. Um, and uh, when when the the you know the the stars that are rotating, um, let, let's say that the, the galaxy lines up in such a way that you know we, we can see the the um, the spiral arms of the galaxy, and and when the, the the stars that are moving towards us, of course, would be blue shifted, and then. Um, the stars that are moving away from us are red shifted, and so the the combined effect of that um, is that the the, um, the you know the the blue shift and the red shift would make the and and so like for example if you look at this at the the middle of the of the um, of the galaxy you know there there wouldn't be any shift at all and and when we talk about the shifts of course it's it's generally looking at um, you know, looking at the the uh, you know the the, the different uh, absorption lines, right? Um, you know that, that come from the stars, uh, and so so the overall effect of this blue and the red shift is to broaden the um, you know the, to broaden the spectral lines, all right? And or, you know these are generally it's absorption lines. So 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 because they're broader, wider. Right, as it's showing in this in this figure right here, um, then uh, what 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 Tully and Fisher did is they realized, hey, you know, you you can use this the the um, the amount of broadening to uh, to to uh, estimate how far away these things are. And, and, and now here's why: um, the faster this this thing is rotating, okay, so so that you know that. The, that's that's going that's going to cause this thing to be broader. Um, the faster that that it's rotating, the more mass, right? So, so the reason that, that the stars are rotating at a specific at, you know at specific speeds has to do with the mass of 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 the you know the total mass of the galaxy, right? And so the more massive, um, the faster the the faster these things are rotating, and of course the broader the the, the spectral lines. Right. So what what that does for us? I mean, just like Cepheid variables, right? What what Cepheid variables do is, you know, there's there's a relationship between the period and the absolute luminosity. Of course, you know, it's it's a it's nice linear. All you have to do is you you, you, you find what the period is, and then you, you, you look at the graph, and you can figure out what the absolute luminosity is. See, once you know the absolute lum luminosity, you can always you know, measure directly in your telescope what the apparent magnitude is, right? Or the apparent luminosity. Really, that's what we work with is generally the apparent luminosity. Um, and so, so the, the same thing goes with these, um, 
these spiral galaxies, right? So again, you got you got to have a spiral. It's got to be oriented in such a way that we can, we, you know, we can see the broadening. That is, you know, the the, the uh, some of the stars are moving towards us, and then the other stars are moving away from us. So that'll cause this broadening, and and then you know. Um, the, 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 the faster it's rotating, the more stars that are there. Anyhow, that gives, that gives you, I mean, ultimately what you're looking for with, with, with this, um, is, is to figure out what the absolute luminosity is of the entire galaxy, right? So, so this is, so we're using an entire galaxy as a, as a, as a measuring tool. Um, so this, the, this Tully, Tully Fisher relation, um, extends our, our reach out into space um, well beyond uh, 250, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 25 megaparsecs. All right, so, um, and let's see, what is this? It says, uh, not all galaxies, uh, some galaxies have no Cepheid variables. Um, and the thing is, um, they, they uh, yeah, um, like for example, um, you know, mo most uh, elliptical galaxies, right? They don't have any. Remember, Cepheids are are happening um, when when the stars are dying, right? When the stars are, have left the main sequence and are in that in that uh, instability strip. So w what they're saying here is, you know. Um, Galaxies like like uh, elliptical galaxies, um, th th there's no stars going th that are leaving the main sequence. They've left it long, long ago, um, and so so you don't you don't have this you know you don't have uh, Cepheid variables to use as as a as a um, as a as a yardstick, if you will, um, and so so uh, this 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 relationship allows us to to look further out into the universe. Um, but again, you're, you're restricted because you have to find a spiral galaxy. And um, remember, the, the, so the, the faster it's rotating, the broader the, the lines. And then, of course, um, you, you, use the, you use this. It's, it's a nice linear relationship. Uh, we'll, we'll show you this a little bit later. Um, and, and you just look at that. You look at what the speed is, or really it's the broadening, but... Um, you, you go from that, and you can figure out what the absolute magnitude is of of the galaxy, of the entire galaxy. And so then you use that, again, as another yardstick um, out into the universe. All right. So then we have what are called standard candles, right? So sta a standard candle is um, using, you know, something that, that is always, no matter how far away it is, it always has the same... Uh, brightness. All right, so here, here's here's an you know candles obviously come from a time before lights, uh, <laughs> before you know you had electric lights. Um, but but here's here's an example for 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 us uh, more in modern times. A standard candle would be something like you know that you have a hundred watt light bulb. You, you, you see, like if you already know that, if if you have that knowledge or you have that information, and the light bulb, you know, is put, you know, anywhere on campus, for example. This, this is the, um, the general example that I like to use. It doesn't matter where that, you know, as long as you can see the light bulb, um, if you, you sit there with your telescope and you collect the light, um, and, and so you can measure, you know, the, the amount of, um, you know, uh, uh, power, Per square meter that that you're receiving, I mean that that's you know, one of the you have to make sure your telescope can do that. But it's just purchasing the right equipment. Uh, anyhow, if you, if you you measure the amount of energy per square meter that that's that's coming into your telescope, and of course that that energy per square meter goes down as the square of the distance, right? That's the whole you know inverse square law. So if you Again, if you already know what the, the that you're looking at a hundred watt light bulb, then the amount of energy per square meter that you get, you can work that you can work backwards and figure out the dist how far away that light bulb is. And so it doesn't matter; you can put that light bulb anywhere as long as you can see it and measure measure the um, 
the, the amount of, uh, you know, uh, power per square meter, the, the number of watts per square meter that you're receiving in your telescope, you know, you, you, you already know. Um, that, that, well, you, you got to work out the math, of course, but you, you can figure out how far away it is. So this is the same thing. With, and, of course, we use type 1 supernova. Right. Just as a reminder, um, type one supernova is when a um, you have a white dwarf and it's in a, in a in a binary system, and the white dwarf accumulates more than um, it, it, you know, more than uh, uh, one point four times the mass of the sun on the on the surface of it, and then it um, you know it basically explodes. But they all see the thing is. That explosion is always the same, right? Be because it's a type 1 supernova, you know that you started with a white dwarf, and you know that the amount of matter that has to accumulate onto the surface. And so the explosion is the same, right, for all of these. Well, you know, more or less the same. It's very, they're very close to each other, right? I mean, there's little, uh, there's little variations, but overall, we can use this again as what's called a standard candle, right? So, so right away we you see us you see a type one super supernova going off, you know, in some distant galaxy. You know its absolute magnitude, and then you re, then in your telescope you receive the um, you know the number of watts per square meter. That's of course the that's also known as the apparent magnitude, and then you use the inverse square law. In reverse, basically, to figure out the distance to it, and, and this has been used over and over and over again, um, you know, for I, I think the last uh, how, how long we've we been using this uh, at least I would say at least sixty years, pro probably longer than that. All right, so that extends extends our our reach out into space much, much further. And then there's one more thing um, that, that we're, we're going to go f even further. Okay, so, so, so let's take a look. All right. So remember, this is this cosmic distance ladder. Within the solar system, we, we, you can actually bounce radar off of some uh, different objects. And, and, of course, you can use stellar parallax. Um, even within the, within the um, well, not stellar parallax, but you can use parallax. Uh, within the solar system, um, that works as well. Uh, stellar parallax, you can go um, oh out to about 200 parsecs or so. Remember, there are two spacecraft that have extended the baseline, um, uh, and then of course there's there's uh, spectroscopic parallax, where you know you use the color index to figure out the absolute luminosity. Um, uh, all right. So, so, uh, and of course that. And by the way, that only works, of course, for um, the, the, the you, you have to have uh, uh, something on the main a star on the main sequence for that to happen. All right, for for, for you to get that. Um, all right. So uh, and then of course uh, you, we use um, variable stars. Right. Where's my mouse? There it is. So variable stars, which which are are our Lyra. Short period, um, and then of course there's the, the there's the, the Cepheid variables. Um, those are the periods of the days, and then um, there's even uh, longer periods called Myra variables. All right, um, and so that that extends the, the the distance that we can look out into the universe of approximately 25 million parsecs, or 25 megaparsecs, um, and then of course the Tully Fisher. Uh, relationship for spiral galaxies extends extends the distance that we can measure objects out to about uh, 200 million parsecs, and then this method of standard candles uh, puts us at about um, about a, a gigaparsec, right? So uh, you know, t ten ten to the ninth parsecs. All right, so you're, you're picking up a huge huge distances. And remember, this is in any direction. From, from the Earth, so, so we're well outside the galaxy. Um, all right, so that is uh, that is, the, and, and there's one more step as you're going to see. Um, it's of course Hubble, the Hubble, the Hubble redshift distance law, as as we're about to see. All right, so um, and the other thing, let, let me just say this. Uh, well, I'll probably say it again, <laughs> but. Uh, 
you know, the, the